In architecture school in America, you're lectured on Frank Lloyd Wright. He's the most important American architect, really probably of, certainly of the 20th century. And part of the lecture, they talk about these special building blocks, they call it Froebel blocks. But when you start reading about Frank Lloyd Wright, it pops up pretty quick because everybody talks about his training with the Froebel system. What I find fascinating about the Froebel kindergarten methodology is that it really no longer exists in early childhood, but it's alive and well in the design schools and the universities. A lot of professors of architecture are now using these materials to educate their undergraduate and graduate students in design. Our students are making these gift sets. They're they're entering nature in a very direct and visceral way. They're choosing a raw chunk of maple or walnut or larch, and they're working directly with the material. They're developing a respect for wood, for joinery. And it's a very uh, important moment for them as a maker to see the hand as an organ of knowledge and to see these gift sets as an extension of nature, an extension of material, as well as an important theoretical construct. Uh, I use them for many reasons, actually. I use them as a way to teach uh, shape grammars and um, a computational process of design. I use them uh, for historical reasons because they're connected with Frank Lloyd Wright and with the modern movement in general. And I use them for practical reasons because they're small and they're easy to handle and they feel good, so I use them for sensory reasons as well. I think by manipulating the system and by manipulating the blocks and by looking at what you get, you really get some really crucial insights into what's going on when you design something. To me, it feels like it's the perfect approach for today's society, because we need young people to grow up to become creative thinkers. And I think the classic kindergarten approach puts young people on a path to be developing as creative thinkers. They're also deploying their skills as artists. Through black and white photography and an engagement with nature, they're using the sets to decode these events that they've discovered in nature. And in the work that we're doing currently, a small T pavilion here for the Westcott uh, site plan for the new educational campus, uh, these, the tea house joiner was derived from these Froebel exercises where they were asked to interpret nature, understand issues of order, issues of connection because many of them are so used to modeling stuff on the computer, they're not used to actually dealing with real, <laughs> real forms. So they quickly discover that they really don't know as much about spatial form as they thought they did. And um, we're talking about architects. Um, and so they're surprised and somewhat embarrassed sometimes that they don't recognize the same form from different angles, let's say. I think their work with the Froebel sets is tactile, it's visceral, it's through the skin. It engages their intellect and their mind's eye, but it also, in the construction of the sets, the respect for the material, engages their hands and their bodies. If we want someone to become creative, the best way to do that is give them opportunities to create. So we're always focused on how can we help people grow up creating things and giving them new opportunities to create. Uh, initially, when they begin the exercises, uh, when they're given a prompt, their left brain takes over and they begin to think about how is it that I can abstractly and symbolically describe a thing. However, however, you know, over 20 or 30 minutes, that begins to change. And the students begin to see things for what they are. The Froebel sets help them to recognize by looking, and they're looking in a new way. And so, Within moments, you know, I might ask them to use the sets to describe a, a quality of light on a surface in this house. And all of a sudden they look at an encaustic wall, they look at the grain of quarter sawn oak, and they begin to look at those relationships, and then the sets take on a new meaning. And it unlocks doors that have been previously closed, and it's one wonderful way for them to transverse hemispheres. Real conceptual learning means you are connected that you connect this piece of knowledge to this piece of knowledge to this piece of knowledge. And, and when you do, when you make those connections, kids are engaged. It's just a fascinating story. It's going to be a piece that when people see it, it's gonna resonate with them for an unexpected reason. Whether it's, maybe it's something as simple as the fact that they have heard this story about right. There's going to be something that hooks them, and suddenly they're going to think, oh, this is a whole lot more interesting. I think it's going to reach lots of different people, because it is such a big story.